Hello there! Happy Pride Month! We're still here. I have made so many videos about queer books, and today I thought it might be helpful if I rounded up some essential queer books written by Black authors. Friendly reminder that if we're not doing everything we can to seek out diverse voices, especially Black voices, always, especially during this time and during this conversation, we don't get to look away. A friendly reminder that it's not enough to just read Call Me By Your Name or Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda if you want to read gay books. It's not enough to read The Hate You Give and call it a day if you want to read a black book. And if you want to find the intersection, you've come to the right place. Black Lives Matter and I'm standing with all of my black followers and friends during this time and always. And I'm committed to doing the hard work, having hard conversations. I encourage you to do the same. And I will also leave a link to a list of Black-owned bookstores in the description where you can purchase all of these books. I have some stellar recommendations for you today. So the first book I want to talk about is one of my most recent reads. I'm so excited to discuss because this book came out of nowhere for me. It is The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. It's a Stonewall award-winning book. It's written in verse, and I'm pretty sure the only book I've read written in verse before is Crank by Ellen Hopkins. I absolutely flew through this book. It follows Michael, who lives in London and is mixed race. We go through basically elementary school, middle school, high school, into college, and we watch him discover his queerness, what it's like being mixed race, discovering drag. It's a really beautiful story. There are some moments where it touches on friendship and relationships and just gets really really real. I just, I can't say enough about this book. It was just so gorgeous. I think also there's part of me that really enjoyed the feeling of flying through a 400 page book because you can read it so quickly because it's written in verse, but when you're finished with it, you have the feeling of having read a novel. You also have the rush of reading a gorgeous poem. And also, just that feeling that comes with watching a character come of age through a full journey. This book definitely competes for like my favorite book of the year so far. I think Like a Love Story is probably still up there. This is definitely my favorite new release that I have read in 2020. Like no joke. Sorry Suzanne Collins. Please read this book so I can talk to more people about it. Uh, next on my list is All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. So this is a memoir manifesto. This goes through different chapters of the writer's life. So there's an extra layer here where it's it's his family, his experiences combined with societal observations, with truths about the world, what it's like to grow up being black, being queer, all of the trauma that he's been through. It's a really intense reading experience. I always love listening to the audiobook when the author reads it, and that is the case for this one. So I almost always get the audiobook when it's a memoir like this, because uh, there's really just nothing like hearing someone's written words read aloud to you from them. George M. Johnson is a writer and activist, so he has experience as a cultural critic. That really shows. He's just very aware of things that happened to him, writing those experiences beautifully, and then translating them into the bigger picture of his life, his legacy, the culture. And I don't know that I've I've read something quite like that before, that balances those two things. You know, there's one, it's one thing to read a personal essay that you interpret for yourself. It's another thing to read like a more academic work. This one kind of combines those two. So um, again, can't say enough about this book. I love it so much. <laughs> the next book I'm dying to talk to you about, I haven't had the chance to read because it just came in the mail and maybe you've heard of it recently. It is You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah. Johnson. Okay, so my personal excitement of this book comes from the fact that I used to be an intern at Scholastic and the editorial assistant that I reported directly to, Maya Marlette, is the editor of this book and I just like can't wait to read it because she is like a total rock star. Like it makes me giddy holding this book because I'm so excited for her and also for Leah Johnson whose debut novel this is. The cover's adorable. I love when books borrow lyrics. I'm pretty sure this is queer. Like 
pretty sure. Oh, it is. I just read about it. Okay. Okay. I'm reading prom drama. Liz Lighty has always believed she's too black, too poor, too awkward to shine in her small, rich, prom obsessed Midwestern town. Coming back to like a fun prom story, especially one that I'm so excited to read like this, is going to be a real treat. So, da! Yay! Next up we have Felix Ever After. This is another book that I just purchased based on strong recommendations. So I just got this baby in the mail. Stonewall and Lambda Award winner. This is a black trans protagonist. So it's black, queer, transgender. I know this book deals with identity and falling in love. Those two things are really beautiful when balanced in a good story. Like my heart just soars when I think about reading this book already. I just have a really good feeling about it. So I had to tell you about it before I even read it so that I can come back to this video and say that was correct. Maybe some of you want to read it with me. I'm definitely going to read it soon. Um, if not just for the cover alone, like I don't, are you seeing this? I recommended this in my queer books video last year, but I just want to emphasize because this book is wildly underrated. I have it at my apartment in LA right now. This book is queer. It's ace representation. It's written by a black author. It is gorgeous. I love the cover. It is Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn. Also a stellar audiobook that I highly recommend. Not enough people are reading this book at all. Like at all. And just as a little button to this video, if you are looking for an absolute classic and you haven't read Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin, you really should read some James Baldwin. You really should make the James Baldwin that you read Giovanni's Room and then read Go Tell It on the Mountain and then read If Beale Street Could Talk. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Those are my recommendations for today. I will have way more also that I'm really excited to tell you about in my next video. It's going to be a book haul plus recent reads. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. My name is Tiernan if you're new here. Thank you so much for watching. Happy Pride Month. Hope you're staying safe out there. I'll talk to you soon. Have a good one. <laughs> Goodbye.